Okay, I want you to be careful with this mistake that students make all the time when they're trying to evaluate an expression for some values and then simplify. And it's a mistake that students make over and over and over again. And you might be thinking, oh, this might be too easy of a problem, or this is just basic stuff. But I've seen this all the way from Algebra 1 all the way through Calculus and beyond. So it's something you got to be very careful. Now, to avoid this mistake, I'll give you a little tip to kind of help you always when you are evaluating expressions. However, you still have to be careful. The more confident you get, and sometimes the more lazy you get, and that's a lot of times where this mistake will creep in. Now, before we get to this problem, let's just do a quick little review of what it is we are actually trying to achieve here. Just remember, like if I had an expression, you know, we can just do something basic, you know, x plus seven. Now, x plus seven, I can't do anything with, right? This is an unknown plus seven. However, once I say let x equal five, well, now we're saying x has a value right? The value of X is equal to five. So now I can replace any time I see an X with five. So now I can just write this expression as a five plus seven, but I don't like to write a five just like this. What I like to do is I like to put a five in parentheses. Now, the reason why I like to do that is because one, it's going to avoid us making the mistake that we're about to encounter in this problem, but it also just gives me a mental trigger that any single time I'm replacing a value on a variable for something else, it could be a number, it could be an expression. It just gives me this trigger that that is exactly what happens. So when I'm, a lot of times when I'm going back and like checking my work, it's a great way for me to just like visually make sure that I did a mathematical operation correctly. Okay, so let's go and take a look at what we have here. So in this case, we have a quantity 2h cubed minus a quantity k cubed minus h squared plus k squared. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in an h and k whenever we see the h and k, right? So any single time you see an h and k, we're going to replace that with the values because it says let h equal negative one and let k equal two. Now, this isn't the mistake that students don't make, but if you don't follow this kind of tip, you're bound to make the mistake that we're about to encounter. So it's really, really helpful to go and see this. Now, once I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in, I want you to see exactly what it looks like because it might look a little bit more complicated, but as long as you understand when things have parentheses around them, those are values that replaced my variable. Okay, so another tip to kind of follow, and again, it's a small little mistake that actually wasn't really the purpose of the video, but I just noticed I made it. Whenever you open a parenthesis, for any of you guys that have done like coding or any coding, whenever you open this parenthesis, you gotta make sure you close it, right? So you can see here, as I'm like looking back on this problem to make sure I kind of wrote it down correctly, I noticed I have an open parenthesis here, but I didn't have an, a closed parenthesis over here. So gotta make sure you do that because that's the whole purpose of grouping symbols, right? We're grouping this K cubed minus H squared. So we gotta make sure those parentheses remain intact. Now, the other parentheses that I included, this negative one, two, negative one, and two, were just values that I replaced. So now let's get into this main mistake that students make. The main mistake students make is that whenever they substitute in values and that's being raised to the power, they don't focus on only applying the power to what is inside the parentheses. And that's why using the parentheses is so, so important. For example, in here, I actually need to simplify this, right? So I have a two minus one being raised to the third power. It's not negative one raised to the third power and then times two. We gotta make sure this expression is simplified first. So two times negative one is going to be a negative two. And then now I can just rewrite everything else. Now you might say, Mr. McGullin, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> You're writing all of these parentheses, I know, but trust me, when you wanna do the accounting and make sure you're doing this correctly, it's so, so important to do this because I want you guys to see what's happening here. Whatever's in your parentheses, that is what you have to be raised to your power. So what mistake students will make here is a lot of times they will like raise the two to the third power, but they won't raise the negative. It's important when we have something raised to a power that is a repeated multiplication. This is saying negative two times negative two times negative two, which is going to be a negative eight. This is saying two times two times two, which is going to be a positive eight. This is saying negative one times negative one, right? It's just squared. So it's really important here where, cause a lot of students will see this and say, oh, it's a double negative, right? Minus a negative. That means it's positive. No, this is a negative one squared, which makes the positive one. So I'm going to keep those parentheses there just one more time. So we can see, oh, that's a positive one. Eight minus a positive one is really just like eight minus one, right? So eight minus one is going to be a seven. But again, I'm gonna continue using these parentheses just so I recognize here, oh, this is negative eight minus seven. Now here we have addition and subtraction and we just wanna make sure that we read this left to right. We don't wanna add the seven and the four because we like addition more than subtraction. You have to work from left to right. Now again, think about negative like owing money. You already owe me $8 and now you're gonna borrow seven more dollars. Well, how much money do you have? Well, you don't have any money, but you now owe me 
$15. But now you found $4 in your pocket, right? You owe me $15, but you have $4 in your pocket. Now you give that $4 to me. Thank you very much. Now you only owe me $11. Or we can just say the answer is negative 11. So if there's anything, guys, I can help you out with this video. Whenever you have parentheses being raised to power, make sure everything inside of that and only inside of that is being raised to that power. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you want more examples or videos like this, go ahead and check out the next video or the playlist I have for you down below. Cheers.